Hello and welcome to Educo Motivation. In this video, you'll learn all about the law of perpetual transmutation of energy, one of the 12 laws of the universe and a sixth in our series. You'll discover how to manipulate your own energy to create preferential results in your life. Do this correctly and there is literally nothing you can't have. Keep up to date with our latest videos by hitting subscribe and turning on notifications. Please show your support by clicking like. So let's get started. The Law of Perpetual Transmutation of Energy, one of the 12 laws of the universe, decrees that energy just is. It is forever moving in and out of form. It is the cause and effect of itself and it cannot be created nor destroyed. It exists in perpetuity. It cannot add to itself, take from itself, disappear or go away. It has always existed and it will always exist. It is perpetual in nature and it is always transforming into form, true form and out of form. This means that everything we see, hear, smell, taste or touch is the manifestation of energy in various levels of vibration. Motion is the only constant in all things. Change is energy's only attribute. It provides all that is apparent to our material senses. In fact, energy is in a constant state of transmission and transmutation. Everything is always changing and nothing stays constant. Water is a perfect example of this law at work. We all know that water's chemical composition is H2O. This means it comprises two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. One molecule of H2O is the smallest amount of water you can have. Go smaller and it's not water anymore, but atoms of oxygen and hydrogen. What you might not know is that these atoms move at various speeds of vibration. So liquid water is energy at a certain rate of vibration. When we slow down this rate of vibration, liquid water changes into ice. Conversely, when we accelerate this rate of vibration, liquid water changes into steam. Same energy, different state. In this context, the energy that makes up water is not being created nor destroyed. It's simply moving into different forms such as ice, liquid water or steam. In fact, water itself never disappears from planet Earth. The same water you drink today once passed through the bodies of dinosaurs. This same water perpetually transitions into ice, steam, rain, snow, clouds and other liquid forms. So there is no way to get rid of this energy, we can only transmute it into other forms. This is the law of perpetual transmutation of energy at work. From state to state, energy constantly evolves, moves and transforms and it always exists in perpetuity. So what does this mean for you? Well, the law of perpetual transmutation of energy provides the impetus to transmute your own energy into the things you want. Considering energy is always in motion, you can manipulate this energy to get anything you want. To become proficient with the law of perpetual transmutation of energy, you need to become very aware of your thoughts and feelings. Remember, thoughts build ideas, ideas stir emotions, emotions are expressed with and through your body. Your body is moved into action, which produces your results. So, in effect, this law explains the creative process. So you need to think the thoughts that create the states that provide the type of action you need to produce desirable outcomes. Get excited and channel that energy into writing that book or business plan. Get happy and channel that energy into visualizing your goals. Get energized and channel that energy into a strenuous workout at the gym. In all instances, you think the thought to create the state to optimize the action to maximize the result. So your thoughts determine your emotions, your emotions determine your behaviors, and your behaviors determine your results. The energy moving within this cycle is what you are manifesting. 
Of course, you can also spend negative energy in positive ways. If you're feeling stressed out or angry, hit the gym hard or go for a long run. You'll perform better and feel transformed afterwards. Ultimately, you are the master of your own destiny. William Ernest Henley put it well when he said, I am the master of my fate, I am the captain of my soul. He understood we each have the power to change the conditions of our lives. Nothing manifests by chance, it manifests by choice. You retain omnipotent control because you alone choose how you're transmuting the energy in your life. Your thoughts are where it all starts because they provide the impetus to manipulate your energy. Thoughts, positive or negative, transmute into things. You need to make a deliberate effort to build a positive mindset. Think positive thoughts as much as possible. Self-tune your self-talk. Visualize positive outcomes. Read uplifting goals. Extricate negative ideologies. Weed out self-limiting thoughts. If you think you can't do something, ask, why not? The answer reveals the traitor, and the traitor must be exiled. Understanding the importance of positivity over negativity provides the awareness to examine external factors too. Your external environment has an impact on your internal environment. You must get into the habit of noticing the energetic qualities of things around you. Your family, friends, co-workers, TV shows, podcasts, books, movies, the news, all impact your energy. They can tip the balance of your thoughts and set the state of your emotions. This state will determine your level of action or inaction and ultimately your results. So everything matters. Every input across your five senses serves to balance or counterbalance the great internal work you do with your imagination. All negative energy coming into the body is either impressed or expressed. Remember, emotions are energy in motion, and that energy has to go somewhere. If you're not mindful, transmuting this energy could result in storing it inside your body through suppressed emotions. If you do not provide a release for this energy through expression, it's stored within the body and manifests anxiety, pain, sickness, and disease. But how does this relate to your success? Well, you need to realize that your thoughts are cosmic energy waves. They are forever moving in and out of form, continuously creating different types of ideas in your conscious mind which perpetually transmutes into different manifestations of energy in your physical world. Put differently, thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. So you can always trace a result back to an original thought, but how do we invert the process to create the results we want? Well, you originate an idea with your conscious mind. Through conscious focus, this idea is impressed upon your subconscious mind and it stirs your emotions. Your emotions are expressed to and through your body. Your body is moved into action, which produces results consistent with the thoughts that perpetuated that action. So if you want to change your results, you must change your thinking. Thinking is the starting point in the process where thoughts become things. Your thought energy creates your life. Put differently, the images you hold in your mind will materialize in your results. You literally become what you think about most of the time. Thoughts objectify themselves. Let's use an analogy. You need to view energy as the raw material and your mind as the factory. The wonderful thing about energy is that it is infinite. You are never going to run out of this raw material. As the Upanishads put it, from abundance, he took abundance, but still abundance remains. So this energy is always flowing to and through you. In effect, your mind is the factory that processes this energy into other forms. You are now aware that everything is created twice. Everything was a thought before it became a thing. That's why you'll never buy an original painting, because the original is in the mind of the artist. So with that in mind, realize that as this energy flows in, you fashion an idea in your conscious mind. 
this idea is a seedling. In order for it to transmute into its physical equivalent, you need to impress it upon your subconscious mind. The only way to turn an idea over to your subconscious mind is through repeated reflection. You need to focus your mind on the idea repeatedly. How do you do that? Well, your mind thinks in pictures, not in words. So keep holding an image of the idea on the screen of your mind. As Emerson said, the only thing that grows is the thing that you give energy to. You can achieve this through repeated visualization and affirmations. The more you think about something, the stronger it becomes. So if you keep imaging and talking about the idea, you're amplifying it. Focused taut energy on a specific idea will enable that idea to develop roots in your subconscious mind. As Emerson put it, energy flows where attention goes. Next, you have to assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Really try to project yourself into the future and imagine what it would feel like to have taken your idea to fruition. The more you visualize your ideal outcome, the more excited and motivated you will become. This motivation acts as the burning desire that compels you to take action. Desire is the effort of the unexpressed possibility within, seeking expression without, through your action. And this action is essential in order to transmute ideas into their physical form. It sets up a reaction which alters the conditions, circumstances and environment in your life. This is what we refer to as our results. You need to realize that your current results are nothing more than the side effects of your historical thoughts. In order to change your results, you must change the way you think. Realize what you really want already exists in your imagination. It has psychic coordinates. If you go there often, you can bring it here. That's what Einstein meant when he said, Imagination is everything. It is the preview of life's coming attractions. Through this process of visualization, you can stay on the frequency of the thing you want and therefore transmute it into its physical equivalent. So there is a direct correlation between the quality of your thinking and the quality of your results. Whatever thoughts you impress upon the subconscious mind must move into physical form. It does not matter if this is a positive thought or a negative thought as the subconscious mind is totally deductive. It must accept whatever idea you impress upon it. So your subconscious mind doesn't care if the seeds you sow will help you or hinder you. It simply ensures that you reap what you sow. In other words, you get what you expect. As soon as the idea is passed over to your subconscious mind, it sets up a vibration that attracts everything in harmony with it. In other words, your ideas are spiritual seeds and just like physical seeds, they produce after their kind by attracting all they need to grow and thrive. Now you can't set a carrot and expect a potato to grow. If you set a carrot, you'll always get a carrot no matter how much you visualize the potato. So it's important to realize that you will always get results based directly on the particular type of seed you have sown. So if you want to drive a Ferrari, but your dominant thoughts tell you that you can't afford it, then your results will be commensurate with that attitude. Attitude is the critical construct to manifesting the results you want. Why? Well, it's because attitude provides our position or bearing as the confluence of thoughts, feelings and actions. It is the entire process of energy moving to and through us. When it moves into us, it has no form. As it moves in and is expressed through us, it expresses itself in something we call attitude. Earl Nightingale gave some wonderful insight into attitude. He once said, For some strange reason, we tend to minimize the things we can do, the goals we can accomplish, and for some equally strange reason, we think other people can do things that we cannot. He said, You have deep reservoirs of talent and ability within you, so why not use it? The more you listen to these facts, the better, as it will reprogram your mind for success. This understanding is called awareness. If you want to learn something, go to the people that are doing it. Don't talk to the talkers, talk to the doers. Do not believe in the collective wisdom of individual ignorance. If they've never done it before, 
they don't know how to do it and so they can't show you how to do it. Go to people that have demonstrated by their results that they know what they are doing. We are the way we are because of the way we are programmed. When people are negative around us and our mind is open, we accept it and we act upon it. If you hang around people that are productive and going places, then by osmosis you're picking up their best thoughts. Attitude is the conflux of thoughts, feelings, actions and results. Thoughts cause feelings. Feeling is the conscious awareness of the vibration you are in. The feelings are always expressed as action through the instrument that is your physical body. And those feelings mixed with actions produce the results. Successful people have mastered this perpetual transmutation of energy. They took the energy flung into their consciousness, they fashioned the right ideas with their mind, they got emotionally involved in the process, and through action they brought about desirable results. If you forever dwell on lack or limitation, then you are transmuting negative vibration into negative outcomes. In effect, you are using your subconscious mind against yourself and you'll quickly find that you cannot generate positive results with negative ideas. So many people continue to curse their luck. They lack the awareness to realize there is no such thing as luck. The results you get are pursuant to the thoughts you think. To dwell on negative results is to invite more negative results into your life. Napoleon Hill once asked Andrew Carnegie what he did with his spare time, to which he quipped, I don't have any, all my time is accounted for. So don't spend time with people that don't serve you or what you want to do. Avoid people that are plugged into negativity or have a why it can't happen mentality. You have to be very careful who you spend your time with as your mind is malleable to negative suggestions. We become very subjective to our environment. We need to change that. We need to become more consciously aware. If someone you love perpetuates negativity, then don't go as often and don't stay as long. But while you are there, keep your conscious mind working. When they give you something really negative, just say, I understand, then change the subject. Changing the subject is key to taking them down a different path. You simply don't want the energy flowing into your consciousness to be sculpted by the negative opinions of others. You want that energy to become the composite of your greatest intentions. You need to develop the ability to create mental images of the results you seek irrespective of your current results or the opinions of the people you associate with. Yes, you realize your current results are there. Yes, you are aware of the negative opinions of others but push them to the edge of your awareness. Instead, focus all your thought energy exclusively on the results you seek. This will change your vibration and make you feel optimistic. Optimism is a form of positive expectancy. It gives you the motivation to take the actions consistent with the results you seek. This sets off a chain reaction that ultimately attracts the very outcome you are in harmony with. Conversely, if you focused on your current results, you might get depressed. This is a form of negative energy which drains your physical energy and demotivates you from taking action. This serves only to amplify your existing results. So once again, realize that any thought held in mind must move into physical form. You have direct control over the thoughts you think, therefore you have direct control over the results you get. Focus all your mental energy on the things you want to materialize in your life and it will materialize. However, you need to guard your thoughts carefully because anything held in mind reproduces after its kind. A typical example of this law in action is the fear that strikes people when they have to give a talk or a presentation in front of a large group of people. Typically, fear consumes the person and they spend the preceding days or weeks thinking about all the things that could go wrong. Inevitably, when they stand before their peers, their fears are realized because they can only reap results based on the thoughts they have sown. It's such a pity really, especially when you consider that fear is the only human emotion which pertains to something that hasn't happened. 
It's a flagrant misuse of imagination that creates an illusion of impending danger that transmutes into its physical equivalent. As Job put it in the Bible, What I feared has come upon me, what I dreaded has happened to me. I have no peace, no quietness, I have no rest, but only turmoil. Conversely, the aware person will spend the days preceding the presentation visualizing all the good that is going to happen. They will see themselves in their mind's eye standing confidently before their peers. They will hear themselves deliver a perfect presentation, visualize strong body language and pitch perfect diction. They will feel the energy of how happy they are afterwards with all their peers congratulating them on a wonderful presentation. As a result, positive energy is transmuted into physical form as a perfect presentation. So here we have two people facing the same scenario with completely different results. Both were equally capable of delivering an excellent presentation. However, only one was aware of the law of perpetual transmutation of energy, the other was ignorant of the law. One succeeded, the other failed. The only difference was the idea held in mind. This was the energy that transmuted into physical form. Keep up to date with our latest videos by hitting subscribe and turning on notifications. Please show your support by clicking like. Be sure to click the next video on your screen right now. This features the next law in our series, The Law of Cause and Effect. It reveals how to get anything you want by reverse engineering desired effects from proven causes. This literally guarantees success if you follow the advice provided.